Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back, and today I want to talk about improving your KD, your kill-death ratio. The question I ask you is the question you need to ask yourself, what's holding you back? This video aims to find out what that is and correct it. So each tip I go over today is in a mindset of practice, a conscious effort to get better. Now Quick Play or Rumble is going to be the playlist of choice to try all this out in, and as the games are happening, the outcome of the game isn't the important thing. It's important what you're doing in-game from moment to moment, engagement to engagement, that's what really counts. I've made a lot of PvP tip videos over the years, and when I make them, they're a genuine attempt to try and help, and I've probably had over a thousand individual messages from players saying that the tips have helped. The thing about tip videos is a lot of players think that with the snap of a finger, they're going to instantly be the greatest player that ever walked in the Crucible, and the truth is, it takes some practice, it takes some patience, it takes some self-discipline, and you hear it in sports, it's about the process. Trust the process and buy into it. The things that I will be covering today are going to echo some of the things that you've heard in the past, and I'm also going to cover some new things. I'll go over some tips from the How to Become a Better Player video I made a couple years ago. It's kind of a How to Become a Better Player version 2. It applies now more than ever. The end goal is to have a more complete game as a player, and what I suggested back then is what I suggest now. Each tip that we go over, spend 3-5 to five games focusing on the task at hand. Make a conscious effort to do what you need to do. When you do it like this, it's forming good habits and breaking bad habits. The more you do it, the more it becomes natural. That way you won't have to think about it when you play. When it's all said and done, each individual thing that we're working on, each individual drill, will tie into one to make a complete game. When you look at KD, kills, and deaths, those two things work hand in hand. I want you to think about those two things separately. Improving one of these categories improves the other. The outcome of this video is, again, to find out what's holding you back. It goes beyond gun skill. Your decision making and thought process have equal weight in the grand scheme of things. Limiting your deaths is the easiest thing you can do out of the gate to improve your KD. It's something that you can focus on while you're playing and not taking unnecessary deaths and limiting bad situations that you get into. So probably the biggest tip is to limit your deaths by sprint. This is an easy one. This is the first thing I tell players that ask me what ways can they help improve their KD. Out of the gate, this is the most effective way. Think of how many times in your last gaming session that you died when you were in sprint. A lot of those times you were caught in sprint with the enemy shooting at you. And when that happens, you're done most of the time. You either were out in the open, you thought that you were safe. But when it happens, when you get shot, there's really nothing that you can do. So starting off, and you can go beyond this time frame, you know, spend three to five games and tell yourself when you see red on the radar, your sprinting is over. The only time you ever would at that point is to get a more advantageous spot, but knowing that you're going to take some fire. But when you see red on the radar, get out of sprint. Start teaching yourself that. Because you're getting ready to be in a gunfight. It's that mindset. Use sprint to go cover to cover. Use it to be aggressive when you need to be. And you will be at times, but the goal of this is to start off by completely erasing any death that comes from sprint. Let's build off of that and go into our second thing, being next to cover. When you eliminate those sprint deaths and get into the habit of seeing red on your radar, you start to tighten up. You start playing a chess match with whoever's on the other end of the radar. Whenever you move to cover, the next plan of attack is how. How do you go about the next engagement? Sometimes it's to look down an angle, sometimes it's to bait your opponent into you, sometimes it's to reset and move on to a completely separate area. Each gunfight that you get into, try to be next to cover. Focus on that. It's when you're next to cover, you have more options and better decisions can be made at that point. So for three to five games, again, make sure each gunfight that you get into the entire match, you're, you're in cover or you're next to cover. And when you're there, when you get into these engagements, another way to not take a death is to rotate out and reset with your health regeneration. In this clip, I do it two or three times. So say someone gets a shot on you or you're losing an engagement, you miss a shot, you're low health. Use that time to reset Another engagement. You move around to a new angle, a new lane, and while you're moving, you're regening your health. You're not wasting time. And a lot of times, when you choose to stay right here, after you're low health, when you do that, they can throw nades at you. They can rush you when you're low health. A lot can go wrong. Most importantly, when they get you low health, their crosshairs are trained exactly where you are. So if you do pop out, they, they already have the advantage. They have first shot on you. So use that health regen time to set up a new angle. If that one doesn't work out, you do it again. The whole point is to set yourself up for success. And you kind of teach yourself that there's no rush with these engagements. It's a full 10 minute match, eight minute match, whatever it is, there's no rush. So those two things right here, staying next to cover, not getting caught in sprint are easy ways to limit unnecessary deaths. It ups your KD. It's about playing smarter and erasing those unnecessary deaths. It helps your KD out tremendously. And as we go through this, ask yourself that question. Keep asking it, you know, what's holding you back? from having good games. And we're gonna go over engagements here in a second, but not dying is just as valuable as a lot of kills. Trying to outsmart your opponent. So do everything you can not to take the death. A lot of times you're in an engagement, he gets a shot on you. Every part of you wants to challenge him, right? I, I know you've done it, I've done it, we've all done it. 
He has a shot on you, your red health, you want to pop out and just completely obliterate him. But the odds are severely in your opponent's favor, right? So let's really think about this when you pop back out. It's like a 90-10. 90% of the time, you're going to take the death right there, and it's completely unnecessary. Have some self-discipline, back out for that moment, stay alive, live to see another day. Now, one thing about me... I will never ever tell you to use something over another, right? So if you're a shotgun player, use the shotgun. If you're a scout player, use a scout. Let's not focus on changing you as a core player. Let's focus on becoming a more complete player with how you like to play. And that's gonna be playing to your strength. Each map is designed differently. Each loadout is designed to have different strengths to it. So with taking in what we've gone through so far, the next tip is to either play on the outside looking in or the inside looking out. And when you play on the outside looking in, you keep everything in front of you, if that makes sense. So think about Midtown, right? Longer sight lines on the outside lanes, playing on the outside of the map. You're keeping players from flanking you for the most part. You only have to worry about one or two angles at most. Now the opposite of that is playing from the inside out. Take the middle ring area with the stairs. You play that area, and have access to pretty much every area of the map. You can go to B, you can go to A, you can go to C. You play to your shotgun play right there. It's about complementing what you're good at, not just running around aimlessly. And if you're not good at one of these, you can use this mentality to work on it. There are times where you need to be aggressive. There are times where you need to be passive. A mix of them is what really elevates your game. If you're too aggressive, which I see every single game, you can be read like a book and that over aggressiveness is a weakness at that point. You're gonna be consistently exploited throughout the match. It's about having all of this in your arsenal at any time, at any given time during a match. And when you spawn into a Crucible map, you know, think about it really quickly. What is the outside looking in? What is the inside looking out? Where do you want to be? To summarize this portion, take three to five games, focusing on just one of those things, right? Then you start tying them all together. One game, don't take any deaths while sprinting. A couple games later, always be next to cover. Don't take deaths by peeking. The next game, be on the outside looking in or the inside looking out. Then you, again, tie all this together. You start getting a real feel for what a complete game is starting to look like. Now, the next portion is the kills portion of KD, the flashy one. Gun skill comes, guys. The more you practice, the more you create muscle memory, the better your shot gets. This is still something I do to this day. As a warm-up, as a drill, I go into Rumble or even Quick Play now. I do three to five games. And I focus with one goal in mind, to get into frequent engagements with my primary weapon. I'm not worrying about taking deaths. Again, this is a separate portion. I'm focusing on my shot, my gun skill. When I see an opponent, I want to get my reticle right on his face as fast as possible. And then headshot, headshot, headshot. Get my desired TTK. Just working on that muscle memory. I'm taking time out of my day. Because if not, there's no real training in Destiny, right? It's, it's always live gameplay. And that's actually the best thing to play with, real life situations. So you get into these engagements, focus on your target acquisition, point A to point B shooting, and then stay on the head and get your desired TTK. Just over and over, just work on that muscle memory. In the video I made a couple years ago, I told you to use the best weapon that you have. I saw a lot of comments throughout the years saying that that's not the best way to go. You need to use a non-meta weapon, work with that non-meta weapon to outgun your opponent. But here's the deal. When you do that, you have no idea if your shot's getting better. Because I used to think the same thing. Oh, I'll just use my high impact scout. He has a thorn. I'll just use my positioning strategy. I'll just outshoot him. That's not the case. Here's what really happens. When you play against a good player, they hit their TTK consistently. If not, they're going to be a shot off. So say Ace of Spades, a three shot kill. If you decide to use a 600 RPM AR, nothing against that archetype, but going against a good player with the Ace of Spades, you're gonna have no idea where you actually sit because he's gonna three tap you before your weapons TTK comes even close. So how do you even know if you're gonna be getting better? When they three tap you, no matter how well you aimed, how well you prepared for the gunfight, you had no chance because the weapons just simply out TTKs it. There wouldn't be a way of knowing. So at least use something competitive, bygones, vigilance, wing, ace of spades, something that you know has a good TTK that you're comfortable with, something that you know the shot time to kill and base it off of that. So you go into these games focusing on your shot, working on your first shot accuracy, achieving the weapons TTK that you're using, it's repetition, practicing with purpose. KD doesn't matter in this respect. This is for the greater good. The time that you put into this starts showing up later on. That's where we want to be. We talked about it earlier, but one thing you can do is use what someone believes their strength is and use it as their weakness. Right now in Destiny, undoubtedly, it's going to be shotgun rushers. Each game that you play, you're going to see players that are doing this. Now, these players are read easily, like this guy right here. He has a shotgun in hand. He throws a grenade. I see where he goes. There's only one way he can go. He's nonstop towards me. It, this is an easy kill for me every single time. Now, a big part of high kill games, good KD games, is baiting these guys, these players. Sometimes they bait themselves, outplaying and outsmarting these players. It's something that you need to have in your mind because it's going to be the truth. 
a game within the game is outplaying these shotgun rushers, because if you can do that, your KD will go up. Now that's easier said than done, but they are very predictable, and believe me when I tell you, you can make a career out of shutting these players down, and the result of that is going to be having you having good games, just by shutting these guys down alone. Each of your opponents are generally going to be predictable, they have tendencies. What separates good players from great players is unpredictability. Destiny is, is special in the case that they have shaders that are different classes, so take a mental note of what is going on in-game and place them in your mind. Know that the Orange Titan always rushes with a shotgun. Know that the Purple Warlock likes to be in the back with a Jade Rabbit. Take a mental note of where these players like to be, what these players like to do, and use that against them. The last thing I want to cover is your mindset. From now on, make everything about you. When you die, what happened? Did you peek when you shouldn't have? Did you miss shots? Did your opponent make a great play on you? And that's something you can't get mad at. There's another human being on the other side. They made a great play. There's nothing you could have done. But most of the time, there was something you could have done a little bit differently. So take responsibility for what happened and learn from it. It's very important to the growth of becoming an overall better player. But don't be hard on yourself. You learn and move on. For a lot of you, there's untapped potential. For a lot of you, it's just a reminder. And for a lot of you, Destiny 2 is your first shooter game. Just keep working at it. What's holding you back? There's a lot to talk about. Things like staying with your team in a team setting, using them to leech kills as a way to bait opponents into them, which you should. I don't want this to be over a 20 minute video. But I want to thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are subscribed, you rock. Thank you very much. So let me know down in the comment section, what are your thoughts on improving KD? What are your tips? Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.